Hola everybody, welcome back to my channel and today we're delving into a very complex and often misunderstood topic, the topic of trauma bonds. Trauma bonds are intense emotional connections that develop in abusive relationships, which makes it incredibly challenging for victims of this to break free from. And in this video, I'm going to explore what trauma bonds are, how they form, and most importantly, how to overcome them. So let's get started. What are trauma bonds? Well, trauma bonds are emotional attachments that develop from repeated cycles of abuse, devaluation, and positive um, reinforcement. So there's this mix. And this pattern creates a powerful psychological hold that can be difficult to break free from. The concept of trauma bonding can be linked to various psychological theories from a psychodynamic perspective. Um, these bonds are formed through unconscious processes where past experiences of attachment, because psychodynamic is all about then and there and how it affects the here and now. So this is about how uh, unconscious processes from past experiences of attachment and trauma influence current relationships. Jungian theory adds another layer, suggesting that individuals uh, can be drawn to these dynamics as a way of confronting and integrating shadow aspects of their psyche. How do these trauma bonds form? Well, often they form through intermittent reinforcement. So it, this is a concept where inconsistent rewards and punishments create a cycle of hope and despair. Uh, which can manifest as periods of affection followed by periods of abuse. So if you go kind of like to the narcissistic abuse cycle, it's this kind of like uh, idealization, then devaluation. What this does, this hope and uh, despair, keeps the victim hopeful for change. And then this kind of cognitive dissonance, which emerges like, um, hang on, the, the person who's giving me affection is also the person who's devaluing me at the same time and abusing me. So there's this cognitive dissonance and, and this is where it gets like uh, all the friction occurs and the non-movement and it's kind of like this always like within the, if you look in the narcissistic one with the idealization and devaluing the love bombing, you're always trying to get back to the love bombing stage. So this cognitive dissonance plays a, um, a really, really important role because victims struggle to reconcile the abuser's loving behavior with their harmful actions which leads to this mental confusion of cognitive dissonance and this kind of like um, disorganized attachment style which starts up. It's a disorganized dynamic which creates this attachment style of I need to fix this, I need to keep being there, I need to keep running on the treadmill effectively. And additionally, uh, dependencies, whether financial, 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 emotional or social, can begin to trap individuals in these uh, toxic relationships. Some of the psychological mechanisms behind trauma bonding are, I mean, an extreme example, but a good example is like Stockholm Syndrome. So victims develop positive feelings towards their abuser as a coping mechanism. Fear and anxiety furthermore reinforce the bond as victims may fear both the abuser and the uncertainty of life without them. Low self-esteem, uh, which is often eroded by the abuser, makes the victim feel undeserving of better relationships or unable to leave. So, okay, so Stockholm Syndrome, let's take that down to a more localized level. This is, Stockholm Syndrome is about you, ha I mean, in its extreme, it's like uh, with kidnapping. You have the power to give life, you have the power to take it away from me. So then this bond forms up. So it's like uh, in the Stockholm Syndrome thing, it's like you are God, okay? Now the same happens within the uh, abusive cycles that this is used in within these trauma bonds. The abuser becomes the giver of both affection and love and valuation, va value, as well as the person who can take it away, which puts them into a very, very powerful position. And if we fall into this dynamic with someone, it will begin to erode our self-esteem. And the more it erodes, like all manipulation and control does, the more it erodes, we, the more we latch on to the abuser, either through, as I've said, hope, hopefully I can change this, hopefully I can get this back, hopefully this, and also this despair of I can't live without them because I am such a poor and wretched creature now that these are the only people, and narcissists will tell you this, I'm the only person who can love you. You're completely unlovable. If it wasn't for me, etc., etc. 
So the impact of these trauma bonds is quite profound, um, especially um, emotionally, and, and victims in experience intense um, turmoil, uh, feelings of confusion, guilt, shame, which cuts really, really deep uh, into the very core of who we are, and this complete helplessness. Uh, chronic stress from the relationship can lead to physical health issues and mental health issues, such as uh, anxiety, depression, and even PTSD. Uh, things like uh, loss of appetite, letting, letting yourself go, not taking care of yourself, um, because you, they're devaluing you, you're beginning to devalue yourself as well. Behaviourally, trauma bonds can lead to repeated patterns of entering um, abusive relationships, as victims may not recognise uh, healthy relationships or relationship dynamics. And if they do step into a healthy relationship, they don't know how to be in it. So it's it kind of becomes a, a more of a fear. I don't know how to be in this relationship. This this one's a healthier relationship. What am I supposed to do here? Because often you have to stand on your own two feet within a healthier relationship. It's two individuals coming together who are self both self-regulating, want the other but don't need the other in order to survive. And where this kind of trauma bonding comes in, this trauma bond comes in, is I now need you in order to survive. So some steps we can break, we can take to break free from trauma bonds. Uh, it, it's pretty challenging, but it is possible. And the first step is uh, recognizing that there's a trauma bond that exists. And some of the signs include uh, justifying the abuser's behavior, feeling unable to leave despite the abuse, um, and you can educate yourself about trauma bonds and abuse dynamics through books, articles, documentaries, YouTube, the internet. Uh, seeking professional help is also crucial and um, many therapeutic approaches are, are ex really effective. Again, it comes down to the actual practitioner, but they are really, really effective at um, helping you break free from trauma bonds and not repeating it. So, but therefore building your self-esteem, developing, but helping you develop, uh, decide and develop and adhere to boundaries you place on yourself and towards other people. There are also support groups uh, which are specifically geared towards uh, trauma bond survivors, uh, which can be really beneficial. Build yourself a support system with your friends and network, family if you can, uh, if they're not abusive, obviously. And these people build it with people who can provide uh, emotional support um, is really, really essential. Developing yourself a safety plan is also another critical step, which includes gathering important documents, securing your own finances, identifying safe places to go, and lastly, focus on your, lastly but not leastly, focus on your self-care and healing to be, rebuild your self-esteem and your emotional strength. Engage in activities uh, such as journaling, mindfulness, exercise, and creative outlets. I say this on every video because this stuff works. But basically, the trauma bonds are really, really powerful emotional attachments which are formed in abusive relationships uh, through cycles of abuse and positive reinforcement. So this is this devalue, and then I'm going to give you something positive. Devalue, and I'm going to give you something positive. Uh, devalue, and I'm going to give you something positive, which gets you, like I said, confused, running on the treadmill, constantly trying to please and push yourself uh, and keep the relationship going because at some point you're going to think you cannot survive without them. So breaking free really does require uh, recognition, education and professional help and some support systems of, uh, to help you recognize what's going on and to help you break free of it. So uh, that is a real, real quick overview. I hope this helps you. I'm gonna do some more videos on this because I think it's important, but this is just a brief video to give you an outline of what trauma bonding or trauma bonding bond relationships are pretty much about and how difficult they are to break free from. Until I see you next time, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios.